guys, my name's Kelly. I have loved watching other people do these YouTube videos and I thought I would give it a try. Uh, I'm, a mom, I'm a stay at home mom of three. I have a 13 year old son named Keegan, Hi. a 10 year old daughter named Allie, and an 18 year old son named Finn. I have been married for 14 years to my husband Christopher. We also have two puppies a German Shepherd named Rocky, and a Golden Retriever named Molly. Um, we, I guess, are pretty normal family. Uh, but anyway, I thought it would be fun to give these YouTube videos a try. I like, I cook a lot because, you know, I have a family. Um, I like to bake. You can expect to find those kinds of videos. Um, like vlogs, spend the day with me, <laughs> day of the life, um, stuff I do with my kids, uh, you know, certain, you know, I'll take you along if I'm, like, shopping for something or, you know, a project at my house or decorating, stuff like that. Um, just things that I think you guys might enjoy. Uh, I am a New York girl, born here on Long Island, lived here basically my entire life, for all of like, except a year and a half where I lived in Idaho and Florida. <laughs> Mostly Florida, I lived in Idaho for like three weeks. Uh, but basically I've lived on Long Island my entire life. Uh, it's a love relationship. It really is. But I am married to this island because my husband works for the Long Island Railroad. I don't know if I'm supposed to say that or not, but I guess I'm going to edit that out if I have to. Um, or edit that out too. And the crying. Um, yeah, it's just going to be a part of it. Puppies barking. Fighting probably. Kids. I have my mom living with me too. Uh, she's lived with us since last Thanksgiving, so um, there's that too that you might hear or see. Um, but anyway, I think this will be fun. Uh, I feel like I have some stuff to share. Um, I know that there are a bunch of YouTubers that do this, uh, but I feel like maybe I can put my own on this and, you know, bring my own thing to it and, I don't know, uh, I'm excited to see how it turns out, to share the things with you guys that are a part of my life, um, I'm a dance mom, I have a son who's very into music, uh, I have a two year old that doesn't know what we're going to Know, where life is going to take us yet. Um, we are, you know, going on vacation to Lake Georgia in a couple of weeks, so I can share that. You know. <laughs> so, like I said, day of the life, cooking, decorating, cleaning, um, you know, maybe shopping hauls. We'll see see how it all goes. I'm excited to see where this leads, where everything goes. Um, and so in this video, I just wanted to come on real quick before and introduce myself, uh, introduce the people around me. I think my son, oh, he's running away. I thought he was coming around to jump in. Uh, <laughs> But in this video, I'm going to have a few crock pot recipes. Um, one of the things that, um, shit. one of the things that I have to get unique with is dinners because, you know, there's dance, there's music, there's a uh, jazz band, or my son will be trying out for a new uh, chorus this year. Um, but, you know, I like to bake. I, when I got married, I could not cook. I basically yeah. learned to cook by watching Gianna DeLaurentiis. She was, I watched a lot of others, 
but she was the easiest one to cook, learn to cook from because her recipes are actually not just like, um, I started watching her when she was on Gianna at Home, and she had a little one too, so, you know, like, she would always be like, you know, you want to keep it kid friendly if you have kids, and like, you know, like, she would because she had one, um, so, you know, I, I, plus her recipes are actually really affordable if you have a family and you're on a budget or whatever. Her recipes are affordable. Some of the other, you know, people I would watch, you go to make their recipe and it's like, whoa, like, this ingredient costs what? And it's like, no, like, scratch this. Where are we going to go from here? Because now what am I going to make? But, uh, I do like, I do like the Barefoot Contessa, because she's from Long Island, but, um, Giada, probably the one I'm influenced by most, you'll definitely see recipe, her recipes on here, um, but I'll share a few Crock-Pot recipes with you guys in this video, and, um, I've already actually filmed them. And they were good, <laughs> so uh, definitely give them a try if you. <laughs> <laughs> the production value around here. <laughs> the dance pictures when they take the pictures while you're running and throwing your arms are better than this. Wow, thanks, Al. <laughs> so anyway, I got some. I already got some video ideas. Uh, filmed. I already got some video ideas going. I'm super excited to share with you guys. Um, and I hope that you'll, you know, come along with me for my journey. Um, like, subscribe, all that. Um, and, you know, give these recipes a try because they are really, really good. Um, especially the crock pot recipes. I think I say this when I'm cooking. But crock pot recipes don't heat up your kitchen, so they are also good for summer, not just busy nights in the fall or winter or spring, whatever. It's good for summer because it doesn't heat up your house. That's the two year old. My favorite crock pot meal so far. My favorite crock pot meal so far that she made was she made some really good chicken meal. It was like I think what Mississippi chicken. She made homemade mashed potatoes. It was so good. Yes, that is will be included in this video. Um, some nights we don't make the homemade mashed potatoes. You make the, uh, you know, the instant from the bag. But homemade. What? Oh, who's the other uh, Food Network lady I love? Um, oh, she doesn't have a show on anymore. She was the farmhouse lady. Oh, what is her name? Oh, her book is right somewhere. Uh, Nancy Fuller. Nancy Fuller. Fresh is best, so obviously the homemade fresh mashed potatoes are better than the instant stuff. Um, and I love when I can do that, because it really doesn't take that long. But they, it's definitely worth it if you can. Um, and I try to, you know, follow, keep that rule in mind uh, when I am cooking. You know, fresh is best. We try to buy local. There is a bag of hard corn from one of my favorite farm stands around Long Island. Um, so, you know, if I can get them local stuff, we have Harb's Peaches right here. Uh, yeah, I've never had that. Yeah. You have. I have. Again, the production value. Thank you, Keegan. Um, Again, Anyway, hopefully this will all get edited out and just be a nice smooth yeah. uh, yeah. intro to my channel, to this video, and like I said, come along with me. I think we'll have a good time, and I think, yeah, the two-year-old agrees. We got approval. So, uh, like, subscribe, and I will see you in my next video. Bye! Yeah. Hey guys, so for today, for dinner, I'm going to make uh, Mississippi chicken in my crock pot. 
It's great about the crock pot because on days like today where it's super warm out, super humid out, and then my daughter also has dance tonight. Hi. That's her. Anyway, um, it's it's super convenient. Obviously, most people already know this. But what I really want to talk about is this Good and Gather chicken from Target. So, um, I love buying my chicken from Target. Uh, this, obviously, ignore the date. It says February. It was frozen. Uh, but the price says $1.99 a pound. It's now up to, I just checked on my phone in the app, it says $2.29 a pound if you buy the bigger uh, portion of chickens. So... Um, like the or what would be considered the family pack so But what's really great about the target chicken is that you don't have to cut a lot off of it when You're going to cook it like I find Sometimes the store brands like the grocery store brands you shop for Have a lot that you have to cut off before you can cook it. Well, at least I cut off a lot of it um, When you buy like Purdue it, there's not a lot to cut off, but you know Purdue is five ninety nine or six ninety nine a pound. So uh, if you stock up when it goes on sale, they I used to see like buy one get one or forty percent off. Either of those deals were pretty good, but I haven't seen a sale like that on Purdue chicken in a long time. So um, when I found this chicken at Target, I was I'm really impressed. So, uh, just a little tip because it's also two twenty nine a pound. That's like cheaper than going to the grocery store. It's not as cheap as Purdue, but I think the quality is just as good as Purdue. Okay. Okay, so I got my chicken in the crock pot. Then when you're making Mississippi chicken, you add a packet of au jus gravy mix. I'm going to add two because, well, I have a bunch of chicken because I have a bunch of people to feed. Um, if you have teenage boys, you will know that they will eat you out of house and home. They will. That is just facts. Um, that's not a boy. That's a thing. What about you, Keegan? Wow. Yeah, I'm going to say that on her birthday. I'm going to say that. I can call you fat. All boys, when they're growing, they just eat. Uh-huh. So, sprinkle this around. What about me? I'm a growing girl. Um, I like to add just a little salt and pepper. Um, sometimes chicken needs some help. There's a little extra flavor. So, uh, I learned that from Giada. De Laurentiis, anyway. Gia De Laurentiis. So, oh. my chicken, my ranch is not working with me. I'm not ranch. I'm So, let's see. Just about a capful of the ranch seasoning. Oops, not that. So, I'm going to toss that in there. Then we're going to use some of the juice and some of the pepperoncinis in here. This gives us so much flavor. Helps make the uh, sauce in the chicken. And then I'm going to throw in some of the pepperoncinis. Okay, guys. Just ignore my children in the background. No, That'd be great. don't ignore me. So we'll start with that, which goes and more. And then we're going to add a stick of salted butter. Hi. Can you? <laughs> this is actually a little less than Hi. a stick. The butter high. Um, I'm going to put that right on top. Come on, Alyssa. <laughs> then we're going to throw the top on this, and um, it's kind of late in the afternoon. Uh, it's quarter to two, so I'm going to put mine on high um, for like four hours, and then I can always turn it down to low, but I want to make sure it gets cooked, so 
I'm going to turn it on to high and let this go. And it'll create almost no heat, but my house will smell great. And my kids will eat and they won't complain. And Your kids aren't going to be here, so I'm going to dance. You're, you're going to eat when you come home. Don't act like you're not. I'm not. So, um, I will come back in a little while and show you guys what to do with this and what it looks like. Okay, so I forgot to mention that I took the chicken tenders off of my chicken breasts. Um, that chicken tenders are super easy for kids to eat. And um, when I'm just making them for like a quick snack for them, I literally like don't even flour and dredge them in egg. I just put them in some... Uh, breadcrumbs and bake them up for them and uh, I have a two-year-old that loves this I have a ten-year-old daughter that loves this and I have a 13 year old son that loves this so you know especially when they're home for the summer and you have them with you and they're hungry around the clock I don't know what goes on because they don't eat this much when they're in school but, if you have kids, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's like a free-for-all of eating. So, this is just a super easy way to make them a snack or a lunch. They can make, like, a mac and cheese cup with it um, for lunch. Or they can just eat the chicken tenders. Um... Sometimes I'll make the chicken tenders too uh, and save them. The baby doesn't always want to, you know, if you have babies, toddlers, you know they don't eat for the same thing two days in a row. Like, one day my son loves raspberries, so the next day he doesn't want to touch them. Two days later he's putting them on his fingers and playing with them and eating them like he loves them again. So, you know, sometimes they just don't aren't going to eat what you make for dinner. Like, he might not eat the Mississippi chicken. He might, he might not. But, he will eat this fried chicken tenders, guaranteed. So, I mean, it's like chicken nuggets. Okay, so, I'm gonna, now, that's how quick that went. Um, I'm gonna get these, I have my oven preheated to 350. I'm gonna get these in the oven for like 25 minutes, probably not even, 20-25 minutes till they're cooked. And, uh, that's that. Okay, guys, so made a little bit of a mistake. Uh, so I'm just going to do a voiceover right here. Um, that is, I shredded up the, the chicken. And now I'm going to move on to the potatoes. Um, like I said, this night I actually made potatoes from scratch. So I took Yukon Gold potatoes, boiled them up drain them, and now I'm going to start adding ingredients to it. I add in um, heavy, a little bit of heavy cream, uh, garlic, salt, pepper. Uh, I bought a bag. Normally I grate my own, but actually I really like the uh, bag of Kraft cheese for potatoes. It's, uh, I want to say cheddar and maybe Gouda. But, oh, so, obviously, mash up the potatoes a little bit. I remember what I was saying when I was talking through this. I like to use a potato masher because I feel like when I used to use the hand mixer, and they would come out so gummy and, like, pasty, and it just was an awful consistency. So I started using a hand masher, and it just, I, I you know, it has lumps, but, the, I mean, I like it. My kids like it, and. You know, you can tell they're homemade. If you don't want them to, you make instant potatoes, right? So I just added some garlic powder, butter. This is three whole pounds of potatoes, so I did add a whole stick of butter. Um, adding a little bit of fat-free sour cream into the pot. Uh, I had added garlic powder. Yeah, I'm showing the break. So it's fat-free sour cream. Um... You don't want to ma mash too much 
before and then mash after because you'll still get that weird texture that just is not appetizing and it's not appealing and it's just not nice on the palate. So, again, salt and pepper, you know, potatoes don't have a lot of flavor on their own. What you add to it is what it's going to taste like. These are the potato, the cheese I was talking about. Uh, I think it's cheddar and gouda and it's, I mean, it's really good. I could just buy my own, but you know, sometimes when you have kids, you take shortcuts where you can. And this cheese blend is actually really good with potatoes. I even use it on baked potatoes sometimes. So I'm just going to start mixing these ingredients in. Um, I just always try to keep in mind that you can always put more in. You can't take it out. So, you know, I... Um... You know, I mash up a little bit. If I feel like I need more liquid, I can put more in. If you put too much in, you end up with potato soup. And that is very different from mashed potatoes. So, uh, just giving this all a mash, getting it to, you know, the consistency that my family likes. You know, some families like more love, some families like less. Um, but these were so... So, so good. These were, I mean, really good. Uh, like, even the even the leftovers went. My kids, they honestly didn't even heat them up. They just ate them right out of the fridge. So, um, yeah, so just, you know, mashing up the potatoes. This went... Really good with the Mississippi chicken. Sometimes they do rice with it. Sometimes they do potatoes. Sometimes they do roasted potatoes. It all depends on what I'm in the mood for, what the kids are in the mood for. Um, and uh, I made. I also made a, a bag of. Oh, this is another tip. Always taste when you're eating, when you're cooking, because um, you know. You can always, you know, adjust the seasonings before you give it to everyone. So here I am adding more salt. It needed more. I remember it needing more. Um, uh, I'm adding more pepper. Oh, who knows what else I added? I don't remember. I recorded this a few days ago. I'm adding more garlic. But uh, I made a bag of... My carrots that you just toss in the microwave and heat up and then uh serve this these two sides with the chicken and it was just absolutely delicious i think i show my plate um to my daughter trying the potatoes <laughs> you know if it gets the kid seal of approval you know you're good you know you're golden so and there's her finger in the pot <laughs> um probably be telling her you don't do that get a fork but you know uh -huh. ah, so here i'm gonna plate up somebody's dinner i probably already took care of everybody else and i'm doing my own so i just did a little bit of potatoes and then uh i'm gonna grab some of the mississippi chicken that i have all shredded up and warming kept on warm in the uh crock pot um I am following the WW plan, so uh, chicken, carrots, I just had to really account for like everything in the potatoes. Um, I probably didn't even count like the points for like the seasonings in the chicken or whatever, but my I think my uh, camera got a little steamy too, so sorry about that, but... Um, this was just so, so good. You guys got to give this one a try if you haven't had Mississippi chicken. I know people I do, a lot of people do Mississippi roast, but Mississippi chicken is good too. Definitely an alternative if you're doing WW. Oh, so here I am. I'm going to try it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like I said, it was really good. Um, really good flavor. Um, I feel like 
you didn't have to add a lot to these recipes to get, well, the potatoes, yes. Uh, but the chicken, you didn't have to add so much that, like, you feel like, oh, that's not healthy anymore. You know, um, but the chicken was really, really good. And the kids love the chicken, so we will definitely be making that in our house again. Um, definitely a great school night meal when we're on the run. I think I, ah, uh, I know what I'm doing here. I'm putting my husband's food in the microwave just so when he comes home from work, he works, some nights he works overtime. He doesn't get home until late. I put his food in the microwave that way. Um, the kids don't even know that that's their dad's. Nothing gets on it, a bug or anything. It's just safe in the microwave. Um. This meal made so much. Like, we had so much leftovers. Probably could have, like, left a, uh, a couple of chicken breasts out for something else. Um, we had, my husband had lunch. He had a snack for that night. He had dinner the next night. Me, the three kids, and my mom all ate dinner that night. And there was a container full of chicken in the fridge and... Here's the chicken that was left over. Like I said, it was a bunch. And then the mashed potatoes. The mashed potatoes went within, like, the next... The, they went the next day. Um, and then the, uh... The, the, we had the chicken, which... I think we put on sandwich. It was good on sandwiches. Uh, that's my husband's dinner for the next night. Uh, we had sandwiches one day. We, um, like I said, it just made a lot. And I think I, next time I won't use all of the chicken in that pack. Uh, because I think actually a little bit it did end up getting thrown out, which I hate doing. Okay, guys. So apparently I forgot to turn the mic on for this video too. I'll so, I uh, my son was at his girlfriend's house. So, uh, this is definitely, a. Probably going to be the worst of the videos, um, but I guess, you know, you live, you learn, and everything has its uh, a learning process and a learning curve to it. So, in this recipe, I'm going to make stew. Uh, my mom had been wanting it. I don't buy, when I go to the grocery store, I don't buy um, the stew meat already cut up and everything because they charge you so much more for that. So, I I mean, it's so easy to do. I just buy the bigger piece of meat and then cut it up myself. A, it's cheaper. And then B, I cut it the size that I want the pieces cut. And I don't know why I feel like I do a better job of cutting up the meat than the store does. Because the store, it's all different sizes. Which I guess isn't such a huge deal if you're making stew in the crock pot. Because, uh... Your, um, it's cooking for a long period of time, so the meat's going to get tender anyway, but I always feel like the meat should be about the same size, so it cooks at the same rate. Um, and it's, uh, anyway, we're going to move on. <laughs> so, um, I got this on sale at Stop and Shop. It's, I was probably trying to show what kind of meat it was, but... I don't know, maybe I didn't have the light on either. Again, I'm so sorry, you guys. We will, I will work on the production values. Um, but here I'm just cutting up the meat, and I'm just going to cut it up into slices, and then I'm going to uh, cut that into smaller chunks and get it in the crock pot to get going. Um... I don't remember how early on I got this going. I want to say it was either late morning or early afternoon. So I this had plenty of time to cook. Um, if you ever, though, like are making stew or anything like with a roast or that sort of like, you know, like beef, 
if you go to like check it and it's still kind of tough, this is going to sound weird. You want to cook it more. Um, when you're like working with a slow cooker anyway. Uh, I know that sounds like really backwards and usually it would be, but in this case, like with the slow cooker, you want to cook it longer if it's not tender enough. Um, thankfully I got this going early enough. I could put it on low and then just let it go for the day. It was, it was another dance day. So my daughter had dance and she actually ended up not wanting stew. Um, I and have we Wendy's just instead. And got we got there's Wendy's right by her new dance studio, so we got her Wendy's. And I don't think my older son ate this. I don't think the baby ate this. I think Finn was sleeping, so he got Wendy's. Finn got Wendy's, and Keegan bagel bites. Keegan had bagel bites that night. Um, <laughs> healthy. Uh, yeah, super healthy. But I, I mean. That's probably, like, the first time you were ever allowed to eat bagel bites for dinner. Well, like, we do, like, appetizers for dinner um, on, like, holidays or this past weekend. My son watches, like, the wrestling. Uh, there was the SummerSlam pay-per-view. We did appetizers for dinner that night. You know, we'll do that for New Year's Eve. Um, you know, stuff like that. And... Anyway, we've gotten kind of off course here. So I'm cutting up the second uh, piece of meat for the stew. Uh, I was just trying to, like, make the stew more of an even shape. Um, that way, when I sliced it, it was uh, more uniform-sized pieces. And, you know, again, about all the same size. Uh, so... I'm getting the meat cut up, um, and then, um, trying to think what else I was, uh, I was probably talking this whole time to you guys about different things, um, bite him, really, um, Sorry, there's just always so much going on. <laughs> no matter when, it seems like there's just always so much going on. Uh, you know, it's part of having kids. So, uh, got all the meat in the crock pot. Um, then I washed the, the cutting board and I washed the knife. And I'm coming back here now, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to be cutting up potatoes. Uh, I had some leftover russet potatoes. You can really use any kind of potatoes, but I like russet potatoes in stew because it's just like, I mean, like, the my favorite kind of potato is, you know, the Yukon Gold. Um, but russet potatoes, I feel like, are, like, a little more... Hardy, I guess is the right word. Uh, it stand like it just it would stand up to the you know eight hour cooking in the crock pot better than you know I feel like maybe a Yukon Gold would kind of like start to get like a little like too soft maybe even start to like turn a little mushy. Um, but if that's what you have, you know, it's probably gonna be fine. Uh, I, oh, this is what I do. I, when I'm, when I'm skidding potatoes, carrots, cucumber, I do it right onto a paper towel. That way it's such easy cleanup. You just crumble up the paper towel or pick up the four corners and just ch chuck it in the garbage pail and you're done. It, it's just, I mean, then trying to, there, it's like, wet potato or cucumber skin or whatever, carrot, and now it's, like, like, not sticking to the cutting board, but it's, you know, it's just easier to do it this way. It's easier, it's faster. Sometimes, you know, I know it's a waste of a paper towel, but it's just easier to take the shortcut, and, you know, it saves me time, I feel like, so... Uh, I'm just getting 
Um, these potatoes peeled, uh, which is funny because the night before when I made the mashed potatoes, I did not peel them. That actually turned out really good. They were so good. It had like, it added like crunch to the mashed potatoes. Not crunch. Texture. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't like crunchy, but it added like. Texture. I don't know. I, the word she's looking for is texture. It wasn't crunchy. <laughs> um, but I guess you could probably not peel the potatoes and put them in the stew, too. And it would be totally fine. Um, I thought, like, my kids would be eating. I knew Keegan was going to eat, but I did think Allie would. Keegan doesn't like gravy, which is why he wasn't going to eat the stew. Um, okay, wait, wait. The reason I didn't eat is because go. I had dance for like three or four hours after they ate. So I didn't, so it was going to be all soggy and disgusting. It's not soggy when it's cooking in a crock pot all day. Yeah, well, it didn't cook in the crock pot while I was at Anyway, day. that's the me just being able to just, what I was talking about, just quick. Like, it's out of my way and I'm done. And I can move on to cutting up the potatoes. Um, I try to, like... You know, whatever size I cut the meat, try and keep it about the same. Um, so these were russet potatoes, pretty big. Uh, so I just cut it in three slices and then chunked it across. And it was about the same size as the meat. Um, oh, you were looking at me funny. <laughs> so... That's uh, the thing about crock pot meals. You have to have a little time in the beginning to get it all together, um, which I did take some shortcuts here with this meal, uh, and you will get to see that. But like with the uh, with the vegetables, I did not like sit and peel carrots and cut them up. I didn't, you know, I didn't even use baby carrots, to be honest. I just bought a frozen bag of mixed vegetables and just threw it in at the, like, I don't know, a half an hour before we were ready to eat. And it worked out great. Um, they cooked, you know, that in that half an hour and it was just super easy to do. I'm trying to remember what else I want to put in the stew with oh yeah uh i love the uh i think it's campbell's i i'm definitely gonna show it um they have like cooking packets uh they have for grilling wow. saute baking slow cooker so i had two packets of the campbell's slow cooker beef stew and i just opened them up and poured it in and i was able to get you know, I didn't have to make any kind of sauce or gravy or anything like that. I was just able to give it. Here's what I'm exactly what I'm talking about. The Campbell's slow cooker beef stew. Peel the top across, dump it in, take a wooden spoon, mix it all up, and get it, put the top on and get it going. Um, so took some shortcuts, but I think when you have kids, you know, especially little ones that are you know, running around at your feet or, you know, maybe in the next room. I have an open concept house, but there is like a half wall sort of. Uh, so if my two-year-old is, you know, in there by himself, like I'm running back and forth to check on him. Sometimes the, slow, the, the shortcuts, they are worth it. And this, like this, I thought the sauce was really, really good. Sometimes I find, like, when you take these kind of shortcuts, maybe, you know, they add, like, a super amount of salt. And, like, well, you taste the salt, and I didn't find that with these at all. Well, I've never found that to be the case with these. And one of my favorite ways to make chicken, actually, more in the fall, winter, spring, or whatever, when it's not as hot, but I think I even made it last week, uh, is the Campbell's Classic chicken you bake it in the oven with the sauce it's one of my favorite and it's not salty um we've done the skillet ones they're not salty we've done the grilling ones not salty so 
like I said, opened it up, poured it in. Now I'm just mixing it all together. I'm going to throw the top on and let this baby cook away for the day. Um, and then it actually um, ended up being really, really good. So uh, my kids missed out, but we got a bunch of meals out of this too. Um, me and my mom, I'm so sorry. Me and my mom and my husband all ate dinner. Um, not dinner. Me and my mom ate dinner. My husband had a snack when he came home from working overtime. And then he had it for dinner the next night. Um, and then uh, my mom had it for leftovers a few nights later. So, like I said, put it. Put the top on and let this baby cook for the day. Hi guys, so my stew's been cooking all day. I did add a package of frozen veggies in here. Um, carrots, I think corn, peas, and string beans, yes. And I added that to the meat, the potatoes, and the stew package that I added earlier. So now I'm going to add this can of jalapeno and bacon beans. I already took Stu out for my mom because she's not the biggest bean person. So my husband said this would be good. And my dad always put, I'm not the biggest stew person, but my dad always put, uh, he sometimes would put beans in the stew and he would call it cowboy stew. That was when I was like, oh, I can get on board with this kind of stew. So I'm just going to mix this in. Um, this brand of beans isn't like really spicy. I don't eat a lot of spice. So, in this bowl, I have some egg noodles with some butter. My husband told me to try it with the egg noodles. I think that's the way he likes it. So, I'm just going to spoon this over. And, um, I like more vegetables and potatoes than meat. And we will mix this up. And see how it tastes. It's gonna be hot. It's pretty good. I was a little nervous. Um, but it cooked all day. The meat is nice and tender. The potatoes are cooked. The veggies are cooked. And um, I like the be the added beans. So you guys should, you know, give it a try. I think it is more of a winter kind of meal. But you do it in your crock pot and your house doesn't heat up. So my house heated up anyway because my teenager won't eat this. So he... Uh, I got him some bagel bites to cook and eat, so that oven went on anyway. But, um, if you're not looking to heat up your house and you've got a busy packed schedule, this is a pretty good meal to, to go with. So, give it a try. Let me know if you guys like it. And I might include one more recipe in this video. Hey guys, so I have one final crock pot recipe. Um... I'll probably film a couple more next week because at least one more next week. Um, my daughter has dance on Monday and when she has dance, like, she dances from like 5, anywhere from 5 to 5.30 to 5.45 and then she's, I drop her off and she's there for three to four hours. So it's just easier to get things going in the crock pot early on in the day and then uh, that way, it's really basically ready at dinner time. So, uh, today, I'm making pulled pork. So, I have these pork uh, tenderloins. Usually comes two in a package. Mine are plain, which is what I was going for. Because it's just... I had to give my hands a quick wash. Uh, with some soap and water because I touched the raw pork. Um, I wanted the raw, uh, the plain, um, pork tenderloins because I'm going to make this into pulled pork for sandwiches tonight. 
So, pork is like chicken. Um, it needs a little help. I mean, it has flavor, but not as much flavor as like, you know, a steak or whatever. So, I'm just going to basic salt and pepper. And then, that's the pepper. I use uh, coarse sea salt. Then I'm going to add in some of this McCormick's uh, Grillmates Barbecue Sauce. Just to reinforce that barbecue kind of flavor. And then I also have uh, this Kinder's Brown Sugar. Focus. It says brown sugar with wood fire garlic. It's really not like I was afraid it would be too sweet when I first bought it, but I wanted to give it a try. It's really not that sweet. It's more garlic than sweet, but it's still really good. That would be my German Shepherd barking. He sees a squirrel, a bird, a cat. He hears the neighbor's dog, and he needs to be outside. So sorry about that. You know, life around here. Then I'm going to add a bunch of this uh, raised, no sugar added original barbecue sauce. This stuff is so good. And, you know, I like to like not add too much sugar to my family's meals when I can avoid it because uh, they are not. <laughs> That's my son being a wise mouth. Always chitter chattering in the background. But uh, I'm just going to cover the pork. That way, you know, between the juices from the pork as it cooks and this. Um, I probably used about three quarters of the bottle. Um, I can always go put more in later if I need to. So, you know, you can always put more in. You can't take it out. Um, so I'm just going to throw the lid on this. Turn it on low. And it's a uh, quarter to one. So this will cook all afternoon. Um, it's pork tenderloin. So I mean, even if it cooks five or six hours on low, that's going to be perfectly fine. Because it's a really uh, tender part of the pork. So this will be ready to go at dinner time. And I will see you back 